what festivals do you attend well, that are best I, for animation? I always go to the Annecy Festival in France. Okay. Um, since 1989, I've been going. So mm -hmm. I've been to 26 editions. You know, I wow. spent half a year in France, uh, though I spend most of the time <laughs> in the dark, like most right, people right. watching films. You know, but I'll, I saw, I think, 20 programs this year when I was at the festival. Wow. So that meant I was in the dark a lot and didn't see a lot of people. Right. But that's okay. You know, yeah. I mean, that my goal is to see the films and to really discover them and to meet the filmmakers and talk about their process and all of that. And every year, it's, it, you never know. It's always going to be something different. So this year's different from last year, and the last year or the previous year was different. People are telling me, oh, this new show is better than last year's show. It's like, but I loved last year's show. They say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, but I really love this year's show, and it's it's fine. You know, Different films kind of speak to people in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I do think that there's an evolution in terms of the complexity of the work that's going on. People are actually uh, taking their personal tales and bringing them out and putting on so much effort into making really solid films. Well, um, I am so honored to have Ron Diamond uh, on the Film Threat podcast. It's... Uh, I I had, first of all, it's hard to describe who you are to someone who is not familiar with the world of animation. So how would you describe yourself? Oh, goodness. Um, I'm a producer, an animation producer. I've been producing for 30 years, mm -hmm. nearabouts. Uh, animation, that is. Before that, I was doing movies. And um, in the world of animation, I kind of self-proclaimed myself as the one to put together collections of shorts and ask people to watch them and they do and and these shorts uh and just to be clear these are shorts that are not these aren't pixar pixar puts out those although i think it's yeah, we well, some are pixar Pix quality for sure no we've had many pixar films in the show over the you years. have had pixar Absolutely. films okay i think they're great films you know i mean when uh, when they make a film like piper I went nuts over that film. I thought that was I can't sweet as can be. I can't believe you brought up Piper. Piper is one of my favorites. That's in the latest collection. I think there's a third collection now of of Pixar shorts that I just picked up because Bao is on that one. Oh, really? Oh, God. I didn't realize they put that out. Yeah, Bao, it, it just came out. But, but you curate, I mean, what I love about what you put together in these collections, which come out as... It's sort of a collection that's a, it's a whole program. So it's like, you know, it's like a, going to see a feature film collection of shorts, but the diversity of the, you know, the types of animation, the subject matter, the countries of origin for animation. That's what I've always loved about, I mean, um, just having done a little bit of animation as a kid, clay animation you're making a movie one frame at a time. Absolutely. It's painful. Well, two frames at a time if you cheat. It, if, it's, it's, if, if you do it the way most indie. Uh, yeah, most indie. It's two frames at a time. But, but, but these, these collections always impressed me. And there was a collection I saw, saw as a kid that changed my life in the 70s. It's the Animation Celebration. You know well, which, that would have been the 80s. That was, a bit, was that the 80s? Oh, okay, early 80s. It was early 80s for sure. I'm sorry to say it was probably closer to the early 90s. But was it? it? Yeah. Okay, well, in I, any case. I, I produced the animation celebration and the second animation I knew that, okay, I knew, okay, that thing blew my mind as a kid. There's clay animation. There's even some commercials. There's, I'm going to say it, full frontal nudity in, in the one that, that I saw. It's uh, it's well, it's it's animated. It's nudity. a cartoon. It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. It's <laughs> artful. It's artfully done. But that okay, I I knew that you did that, and I remember we we met a couple years ago. You just reminded me of it before the podcast. We met a couple years ago at a Pixar event that John Lasseter spoke at. It was one of those they're wooing Academy members. It might have been three four years ago when you told me that you worked on the animation celebration. Blew my mind because I that got me to buy a VCR as a kid. I had to get a VCR because that came out on VHS. Yep, yep. And how do you even describe what's on it? There's a, a, a Cat Stevens song that's brought to life. There's a clay animated thing with Will Vinton and Will, Will Vinton produced that, that with Probably rock. Closed Mondays. Closed Mondays, which 
is so incredible. Won an Oscar also by by chance. Yeah. So how do you put together a collection like that? How many films do you watch to put together the collection? What thought goes into the diversity of the subjects and the countries and all that? And and uh, how do you do what you do, I go Ron a, Diamond? I go to a lot of animation festivals. I got to I got to see the films up on the big screen to be honest. I okay. really respond to films much differently than I do watching them on my computer. Right. Uh and then I I solicit a lot of films and I watch them projected at home and uh, really just need to watch a lot. So I generally look at close to a thousand films a year. What is the thing that just the common element that you see where it's like this must be I must have this as part of a collection? I've got to fall in love with it. And that and that is indefinable depending on what I mean, you can't. I mean, you know, we walk along the street and we see people and we say, I could fall in love with you. I could fall in love with you. I could fall in love with you. And they're all different. Right. You know, right. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I wouldn't say I'd do that. But, uh, but I think the concept is there. And I think that when you watch a short film, it's, it just speaks to you and you go, oh, that's great. And it, it's not necessarily even a narrative film. So two years ago, when I put together the 18th animation show of shows, I invited a film. It was an experimental film. I had no idea what was going on visually or narratively. Well, some of these are like uh, my recollection of the the animation celebration. Some of it is just sort of some trippy, drugged out, drug influenced. I would say back in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Yes, definitely more so. Yeah, yeah, Uh, for sure. But but there, there was like something about that that just l- led me down this rabbit hole of now I need to see all of these things when they come. I know, I know they would come to the New Art mm-hmm. in yep. Los Angeles. They would come to the Detroit Institute of Arts when, when I lived in Michigan. And um, is there still a market for these now, like on the big screen? I mean, I, I want to, I want to say I hope that there is. Well, there is. There's a huge well, market. There's a massive potential. Finding all the people who are really interested in that is the biggest challenge, mm. because they're 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 probably walking around feeling a little bit soulless, like they're not connected to their community. Mm-hmm. And I, and I presented a lot of film schools, and I I ask the students, I say, you know, in the animation department, I say, how many of you want to work with Disney? How many of you want to work at Pixar? And you know, a lot of people raise their hands. And I say, how many of you feel like a round peg that's trying to be fit into a, a square hole? Right, and a smattering of people raise their hand. I say, raise your hands high, be proud of it. And those are the people who are out in the public that have forgotten. Today I talked to uh, 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 someone who was uh, doing uh, recruiting for uh, for companies, and not for animation companies, but she had studied animation. And when she found out that I worked in animation, she was very interested, very, very interested. So yeah, we, we were in over 80 theaters last year with the show. Wow, that's uh, so. So, what you're saying is that there's still that group of people out there that will actually head out to the theater. I just, I get, I feel like in the in the age of VOD that we live in now, that it's just, it's maybe not where it should be. So, look, we're going to see the the 20th annual animation show of shows next week. No, I'm sorry, on the third of uh, December, on mm-hmm. a 50 foot screen. Wow. I mean, that's the way movies are meant to be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be gorgeous up there. Yeah. And and the audience will know it, and they will feel it, and they will feel the emotion of it. You know, the thing about animation that's so different from um, live filmmaking is that there's no spontaneity to it. It's all incredibly crafted specifically mm-hmm. for the audience. There's no ambient sound. Everything has to be brought to the table. And yeah. so when we see this in, in animated uh, uh, films, especially in animated shorts, because that's coming right from the heart of a single individual, mm-hmm. we, we, we're looking deep into their soul, and we're, we're, we feel what they feel. And we, we, we feel it. Sometimes we cry. I mean, literally, people feel the emotion of the moment. Well, what I love about the collections that you put together is – just the the fact of being able to be exposed to different forms of animation, all different all different types, um, because I feel we've gotten into a we're in a place where there's sort of a everything is CG, and then there's the Grinch, which 
I I saw. I was not. You don't have to say anything. Don't say anything. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't it, seen it. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing it. It, it, it. I prefer the uh, the original short with Boris Karloff. Uh, I, I, I prefer that. Um, this new one I'm uh, by Illumination Studios, it's, a, it's its own thing. It's for a different generation. It doesn't work as well for me. But um, I feel like there's a, in, in say, I guess the best way to put it is maybe commercial animation. There's a sameness that prevails that is completely broken by what you put together, which I feel is kind of an, I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word alternative, but I can't think of a better term. It's like alternative in a sense of it's not the thing thing that you become used to being fed by factory filmmaking is that no, nobody told anybody to make those films right no one was it, hired to make those nobody movies. was <laughs> right no one was hired like hey we want to hire you to make this movie i mean even the pixar shorts i mean though they're internally kind of brought you know to to you know to the surface to be produced um I mean, those are well-funded. These are things that are put together with blood and sweat from creative people from all over. They really are. They yeah. really are. I mean, we'll see a film this year by a woman who is a graduation film, and uh, you know, she, she tells a story about her mother and how the relationship between she and her mother, she kind of forgot it. She didn't realize when she was a kid how lucky she was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's anthropomorphized. You know, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's a very traditional kind of narrative in a in a two D world, but it's so artfully done, and we feel the emotion of this young character leaving home, and uh, and the pang of the parent, and the, the wanting to hold back but knowing they can't, and then realizing that the parent really gave them everything they needed, mm. and that they need to go back and thank their mom in this particular case. And it's so beautiful. Everybody cries. Everybody uh, cries. What, what, what are some of the filmmakers that have, from your show, broken out? Some of the, the artists that, I mean, would you mind recounting a list? Is that? Well, <laughs> you know, I can't say it's a huge list. I mean, this young woman, uh, mm -hmm. she's working on Glenn Keane's new movie for Netflix mm -hmm. in the story department. Who gets that at age 22? Wow. I mean, she's, she's got it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really touched by Chris Renault who's a big supporter of the show of shows and does the movies over for illumination in mm -hmm. uh, Paris. Um, when I had the privilege of showing his film, uh, no time for nuts. And he told me, he said, you know, I realized in looking at your other films that I needed to make films and I wasn't pursuing my career as a director. Mm -hmm. I, I needed to tell stories and granted he makes illumination stories, mm -hmm. but he does a great job with them. He cares about them. It's that passion. In terms of uh, people, well, you know, I mean, early in the day, I mean, back in 1980, I distributed the short film of John Lasseter, since you mentioned him, <laughs> his student film. Wow. And uh, What was that? It was called Lady in the Lamp, and it's about a lamp in a lamp store who's, uh, you know, the, the owner's anticipating the arrival of the woman who's going to buy this uh, new lamp and uh, doesn't know which one. And so the lamp uh, breaks its bulb and so reaches into a cabinet tries to put on uh, a new bulb and doesn't realize in the dark that it's now just consumed an entire bottle of gin. <laughs> and it, it, it's instantly drunk and uh, destroys the entire store. I mean, no lamp can save itself from its bumbling, falling around and such. And finally, when the woman does arrive, she sees the lamp and she says, this is the lamp I want. The one, of course, that was drunk. It's a very sweet film. And, you know, it... it you see the work of people that just shines, and you 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 go, oh my God, this is this is great. You were asking about people who went on to greatness. You know, I had uh, Benjamin Renner's uh, film, mm -hmm. and he made the film Ernest and Celestine, which was nominated for the Oscar a couple of years ago out of France. Very sweet film, but you know, probably didn't have a chance against a Disney or a Pixar film or something like that. Yeah. But his feature film was so charming, and he made this beautiful tale. Uh, about it, it was a take on it was called the mouse's tail and it was the story of you know the lion uh, who gets a thorn in its uh, in its foot and it needs something to help get it out and it's a, just a very very sweet retelling of that kind of story graphically treated and beautifully told and and you know you meet you meet a guy like that and you go god you're 
it's 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 really that sense of discovery, which I think you going to film festivals and seeing him in that context has got to be the right way to at least kind of filter through. Because I've been to many festivals that put together shorts programs, but it's not curated in the way that you, I mean, you are seeing the best of the best from the fest. What festivals do you attend well, that are I, best I, for animation? I always go to the Annecy festival in France Okay, um, since 1989. I've been going. So mm -hmm. I've been to 26 editions, you know, I wow. spent half a year in France, uh, though I spend most of the time <laughs> in the dark, like most right, people right. watching films, you know, but I'll, I saw, I think 20 programs this year when I was at the festival. Wow. So that meant I was in the dark a lot and didn't see a lot of people, right. but that's okay. You know, yeah. I mean, that my goal is to see the films and to really discover them and to meet the filmmakers and talk about their process and all of that. And every year it's, it, you never know. It's always going to be something different. So this year's different from last year and the last year or the previous year was different. People are telling me, Oh, this new show is better than last year's show. It's like, but I loved last year's show. Say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. But I really love this year's show and it's, it's fine. You know, different films kind of speak to people in different ways. And mm -hmm. I do think that there's an evolution in terms of the complexity of the work that's going on. People are actually, uh, taking their personal tales and bringing them out and putting on so much effort into making really solid films. There's still showcases to mm -hmm. get work. I mean, they do want to work in the industry. They do want to make their own movies. So the more succinct they are, the more clever they are, the more touching they are, the, the, all that comes through. We want to see movies about characters who succeed and achieve and, you know, are likable, but we really don't want to see them look the same each time. And we, you know, we don't really need a lot more chases and you know, China, you know, bulls in the China shop and stuff like that. We've all seen these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Now we want to kind of feel like there's true nature to the actions that are happening. Well, I'm curious if you have a particular style of animation that you like, 2D or. Uh, I, I, I'm a, always been a big fan of stop motion. Yeah. I just love stop motion animation. Um, uh, you know, I love what Henry Selleck did with, you know, Coraline and Nightmare Before Christmas and his style and Vincent. of Vincent, like, oh my God. So um, I'm just curious if you have your own uh, that, that you prefer. Well, I like it's story well told. So I'll start with that as far as right, my yeah. favorite style of animation. But when it comes to artistic, when I see a film that is um, painted, mm -hmm. literally painted, and it's exempt, it's done beautifully, that's extremely satisfying for me. So I often will point to a short film that we remastered and we have it on our DVD collection called La Pista. It was done by uh, uh, Simona Milazzani and Gianluigi Tocafando. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, they, they no longer work together, but this was sort of their first film. And I saw it in 1991 at the Annecy Festival. And I ran up to them with tears in my eyes. I said, I love your film. I want to work with you. And the whole reason for my going to festivals at the very beginning, and still is a reason, is to look for new talent for my mm. production company, Acme Filmworks. So, you know, I have worked with them on several occasions, uh, mo more so with Gianluigi because he continues in animation, Simone is mostly illustration. And they're literally hand painting and manipulating the art. And to me, it's about filling in the gaps and making the audience fill in the gaps. It's not about doing everything for the audience. It's leaving little room for us to interpret what we're actually saying. Everything is so spelled out for us in the world. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Our lives are. Every aspect. Our computers, our phones, our, you know, uh, the every way we get information is so deliberately and specifically put out for us even our friends on facebook all they're doing is tell us in about their accomplishments and all the wonderful things they've had and done and all those experiences it's nice but it's it feels a little bit considered and sometimes it's nice to have things that are just a little bit fragmented mm -hmm. and that's what i try to do with the show of shows and i get to program my show nobody tells me what to do and if i go wildly crazy then they'll stop booking it at movie theaters <laughs> But right now, people don't seem to stop. They kind of welcome that moment of respite in between what might be two very commercial films 
a film where you're like going, what is going on here exactly? See, those are the ones that I think, I mean, if you did a show of only those kind of head scratchers, that would be be too much. But the way that you, I, I feel like, I feel like seeing your, your collections, it's, it's like going to a great memorable dinner party it's exactly what i i, I often really? will refer to it like a buffet a oh, really? meal a meal that's been prepared for you and i tell people go see the show go have dinner afterwards R- right because you will have just had a smorgasbord an incredible array of different experiences and different flavors and different feelings and when you have a great meal and I'm talking about a three or four hour meal. With, yes, you know, that's with exactly what I'm talking or, about. A dozen or more courses yeah. and wine pairing. And, and it's every somebody has really, really taken the trouble to really think about, okay, what's going to be the next feeling that person has? Well, that's what I try to do with the show of shows. I try to take them on a journey. We're going to have our highs. We're going to have our lows. We're going to cry and we're going to laugh. And at the end, we're going to feel okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is this is, has to be the reason that this has sustained for you know decades now. Um, is is that attention to that kind of detail, like like a great dinner party with those where they bring you the small. But there's you know, like I say, there's twelve courses, like you said, twelve courses, and they're just each one is like an, an experience unto itself, and then it's the next one, which is vastly different than the previous because you're ready for it. <laughs> right. Right, right. You need it. It's kind of like, oh my God, that was amazing. Yeah. I kind of need to calm down. So you get the sorbet. Right. But here you're not going to get sorbet that you recognize. (laughs) Right. It's totally like, oh, oh, okay. You know, and then you find yourself laughing at something. You're going, I didn't expect that. Now, what what do you think of other, um, there's uh, Spike and Mike and there's other, what what do you, is Spike and Mike, I'm not even sure, is Spike and Mike still, it's, I feel like I live every day with blinders on. Oh, really? Primarily focused on what I'm trying. You're to focused accomplish. on your own stuff. Yeah. You know, look, there's the Oscar Shorts program as an right. Academy member. You know, I see all, lots and lots of short films through the Academy. But I mean, Spike and Mike, it's a completely different thing it unto is. itself. I mean, it's more of a they, gross out well, thing. Well, it was originally. I mean, they did yeah. something that was akin to the uh, Tournay of Animation, which mm-hmm. was also a show I produced. But, you you produced the Tournay of Animation? I used to go see that as a kid. Well, you're making me feel a little bit old here. What? We, we both have. Oh, I'm hair. I'm pretty old. So don't, <laughs> I but, know I was I was very young. Yeah, but I mean, those things just blew my mind. There was no other way to experience those. I was fortunate enough in the area where I grew up in Detroit that they had movie theaters that booked these shows, right? That booked these programs. Um, the Detroit Institute of Arts, mm-hmm. uh, Elliot mm-hmm. Wilhelm, who I'm sure you know. He, um, I mean, he. W- was a big supporter and that was how I got to see these things. I, I, my mother was very much a cinephile and encouraged me to not go see movies at the mall that I had to go see movies at the art houses because that's where the better experiences were. That's great. So that's great. So you saw, you saw the French new wave and the German new, all wave of the, yes, all, all that all stuff those wonderful movies, crazy stuff growing yeah. up. I saw a lot of foreign films yeah. as a kid, which is probably inappropriate when I think of some of the things I watch, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm, you know, I, I didn't turn out exactly normal, but I don't mind. But, but how does, I, I guess from an, I mean, indie film is on such hard, it's so difficult to release any indie movie these days. I mean, you know how difficult the marketplace is. How do you sustain and keep it? Is it because you have a dedicated fan base that buy your DVDs and that, and that keep, keep you going? Or we is it struggle every day? We're, we're far from successful financially. Okay. We're, that's, we're building an audience. We're trying to encourage our audience to bring their friends. Yeah. You know, don't keep it a secret. Let's st- Let's take this thing out of the closet and yeah. introduce it to a few more people. You know, we need we need the lines wrapped around the block coming to see the show of shows. Yeah. I mean, the, the world needs that. We, you know, we need more love in the world. We need more beauty in the world. And we need more audiences willing to drag their friends out and say, I, I know that you don't think of me this way, but I need to show you some animation. You know, and that's where it grows. And uh, that's mostly my effort is through social media in terms of reaching out to people, reaching out to people I don't know and then getting yelled at for sending spam and eh, whatever. But, you know, I, I think it's so important. It's really important. When people discover it, they go, I didn't even know that kind of thing even existed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like discovering boba if you've never had yeah. a boba before. 
little with those with those big straws yeah exactly. you have to like oh my god how come and then you notice that there's boba places you can mm-hmm. actually there's actually a lot you could you can actually get boba but but it's in 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 the realm of animation there are not a lot of experiences like what you put together this 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 you know you know i think comparing it to the dinner party is just a perfect example it's it's it really is one of those things where you remember it right after and to and to tell people about it like this animation celebration that I saw as a kid that never ever left my like I just never forgot it it led such an impression um that that this is this is why we're talking now well I believe I believe that these films have the ability to sustain just like with you now Mm -hmm. young people who come to see the show will remember these films not every film but they will remember a few paramount films they'll stand out because it's a reflection of who they are Mm -hmm. they will feel the same way that filmmaker feels they will identify and they will carry that with them for me it's the man who planted trees it was in the 21st animation uh, international tournament of animation one of the shows that i was involved in producing Uh, i became very close with frederick bach through the remainder of his life i was involved in putting on a a program at Seagraph where we had 3,000 people. At Seagraph, the biggest computer animation festival of the year of the world, and I have 3,000 people watching The Man of Planet Trees, a completely hand-drawn film with no digital processing whatsoever. And I had John Lasseter introduce it. Wow. You know, Frederick knew. He said, Ron, I need you to organize an exhibit for me. I said, well, okay. So we got an exhibit organized at the Motion Picture Academy, and a lot of people came to that and saw it. I said, I want, I want to do a program. I want to, I want to show the Man of Planet Trees. And we had just finished a 4K remaster of the film through the Academy Film Archive. And when John stood up in front of me and said, how many of you haven't seen the film that we're about to see? And almost everyone raised their hand. And he says, you people are some of the luckiest people in the world <laughs> because you're about to have a life-changing experience. In terms of the films that you see at the at these festivals, what are the ones that don't make the cut? What is there a common thing for stuff that doesn't make the cut? Is it just unremarkable? Is that you know, it could be a two minute film or it could be a forty minute film that doesn't make the cut. Right. You know, what doesn't make the cut is it doesn't strive to be all that it can be. Mm-hmm. It it's not personal. It's what they think somebody else wants. Oh, it, wait. I feel like I want to put a pin in that. It's like it, this is what they think somebody else wants. Yeah. I think that describes a lot of movies that it are does. theatrically released by studios. It does. This is what we think you want and you'll pay money for. But that's not the thing that really moves us. You know, it's interesting. Animators, I, I produced a movie with Paul Freelinger called the Drawn from Memory. Um, it was his autobiography. We did it for American Playhouse. This is back in 1995. And we actually premiered it at Sundance, which was fantastic. And uh, Paul won the prize in Ottawa for, I, maybe it was feature-length film or something like that. But anyway, he wins the prize in Ottawa. And he gets up, and this is an autobiography about his life growing up in, in the Czech Republic, but also being influenced by the time that his parents lived in the United States as expats. I don't know if you ever saw it, <laughs> but we've remastered it. It looks gorgeous. It's a fantastic film. And we have the voices of Václav Havel, the former president of the Czech Republic, not only doing a voice in the film, but doing his own character because he was friends with Paul in grade school and high school. So we have the story about Paul and uh, Paul gets up and he's won this award and he makes all these, ad- you know, gets all this adulation and everything. He's all really very pleased. And he says, you know, I usually work in uh, commercials and people are always telling me what to do. And in this case, I had nobody telling me what to do. It was my story to tell. And thanks to the kind people at American Playhouse, I got to tell the story. This is how most animators are. And then, and then he says, well, and by the way, nobody told me how long it had to take to make it. So I had five years to make this film. And, and that was all I needed. And I, got, I just took what I needed. If I needed more, I would have taken more. And he said, and frankly, I didn't need any more money. I got all the money I needed to make the movie. I never wanted for money. I got everything I needed. Everything was... Uh, and he says, you know, it's really hard to work under these conditions. 
<laughs> Animators welcome being put in a box. Right. They the, love knowing what their their limitations are. Right. I, I, having structure, having structure and discipline, and and just, uh, it, it, I mean, yes, in terms of accomplishing a large task, it's helpful. But when you're given like, here's all the money, go take as much time as you without structure, you're like, well, when is it done, and who's telling me when to finish this yeah, i mean like, I, I, that presents its own set of challenges it does i mean look at richard williams who's a dear friend and a wonderful mm-hmm. i mean one of the most gifted animators living today you know he made the thief and the cobbler mm-hmm. and and he was on the path to making it he just didn't get enough time to make it mm. it got taken away from him now what is when you're putting together your final program are there the ones that got away are there the the movies where, you yeah, know, I, for I, running time purposes or maybe some rights and clearances or legal boring thing? That's probably well, more often the answer. Uh, I, I just what would you say is is the thing that a film that's so close? I'll bet because I'll bet you could curate a second program based on. Uh, no, no, not a no? full program, not a I, full program. I could I could I could certainly have a nice bonus program on a bonus DVD, program, but. The fact is that uh, the problem with uh, distribution of animated short films, I mean, you have to think of it. It, One person has put their soul, their life, their money, their energy, and their heart into this thing. And now I come along and I say I need all the rights to the film. I need to to be able to distribute it. I I need you to keep it off the internet. Oh, I think that's the biggest challenge because more than anything, filmmakers want feedback, right? They, they're and, doing it as a showcase to get new work. Right. How can they not? How can I show? It's like, well, how about cutting a 30 second trailer of your film and let people like it? Anybody who likes it can write you. Anybody who writes you, you can send them a link. Yeah, see, there you get go. Get something out of it. Oh, no, no, no. I have to let people see the whole film. And it's kind of like, well, you know, I, I frankly have never seen a film that couldn't be sold better in 30 seconds than is the whole movie. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, I've seen some fantastic trailers. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I I just, you know, it's kind of like let them fall in love with 30 seconds, mm. 40 seconds, 50 seconds. So, you know, the, you're right. The rights issues are a big issue. And getting somebody to negotiate the rights to a short film is harder in many cases than it would be to acquire an entire feature film. Really? Why? Why so? Feature filmmakers have been beaten up a lot. Yeah, they don't know. Yeah. I meet a student right out of college, and they go, "You know, I don't know. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't." And I can't say every one of the films is not online. And yeah, people can go and try to assemble as much of my show together as they can. But just like the dinner scenario, go to a really nice store, buy all the ingredients. Good luck. What advice would you give to aspiring animators? Well, ones ones who may would want to who've been inspired by your program and want to be a part of it. Look, I'm I'm always looking forward to seeing new films. I'm so I mean I'm like a kid. I get so excited when I see a new film that I love. I I'm so excited. So I I can't wait to see whatever's going to be there. I literally have not seen a film yet. It's it's only November, you know, with it's going to be in next year's program. I have no idea what's going to be in it. Literally, I have no idea. I will see enough films that we'll put together. I believe after 20 years, I will see enough programs. But you, so, so it's what, a blank tra- slate now. It's a total, total blank, blank slate. slate. Wow. There's nothing in there. There's nothing. It's, it's a shell, just a concept. But in terms of what I'd recommend to people is make a film that is achievable for you. Don't set your goals to make something that's bigger than is what your skills are and what your message is and tell something from the heart and solicit input from people you don't know your mom is never going to tell you and neither is your professor the truth because they're both going to get beaten up by telling you the truth i get beaten up because i tell people the truth (laughs) i'm usually the first person to tell them I'm sorry. Oh, no. Your film, it's really something. And I just don't think it's going to fit in this show this year. Oh, wow. It's, well, yes. I, I, I love my mom. I'm pretty sure that she would lie to me and say everything I do is great. But I know that that's not she true. She wouldn't know different. <laughs> right. She right. couldn't even know that she wasn't. She would tell you because 
there, it's just it's impossible. That's why we don't operate on our own family members. It's why mm-hmm. we don't cut our own hair. Right. You know, we need the 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 objectivity of somebody whose business it is. Mm-hmm. And I think people respect that from me. They may not always agree with every selection. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I tell people, I say, look, if they're watching a film in the show and it's like, okay, going on two, three minutes, rest assured in another two or three minutes, it's going to be over and you'll be on to something new and it'll be completely different. There's no reflection between what you just saw and what you're about to see. And, and that's, that's the beauty of the show is the, 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 the sort of different, those different tastings, so to speak, right? Like it yeah. really is like, and it's it, not everything is for everyone. That's fine. Um, and there's some that maybe that seemingly more broad appeal, but it's really that variety that just makes it. So uh, I tell people don't come late because you're going to probably miss the best film in the show. Oh, that's great. Now, and okay, because I want to make sure that people are able to see w- the, w- the website, where can people get things, uh, um, the social media links. I want to make sure. Uh, two. Two okay, primary. Let's hear two well, two three, primary okay. right now. The primary Facebook animation show shows. We have a separate event set up for every city that we're going to go to. Oh, wow. Even if we don't have it scheduled yet, Mark that you like it, that you're going and to encourage your friends to go. If we show hundreds or even over the, what, thousands of people who want to see a show in a particular city, even if we haven't booked in, we show that to a theater owner and they go, of course we're having you back. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Of course you're coming back. Okay. So yeah. animation show of shows on Facebook. You're go. You're on while you're listening to this podcast. And let's say, for example, if you're driving, if you're driving, pull over. Animation show of shows on Facebook. I want to make sure that you so you don't forget. Just do it now while you're listening. It's going to save you some time. And then what's the other place? The other is animation show of shows dot com. Okay, well that's easy to remember. Animation show of shows up. And there's a place to sign up there on our mailing list, and you can opt out anytime you want. Okay, if you hate it. We'll, we'll just tell us just tell us to remove you and you'll opt out instantly you, we, you don't have to it's not a lifetime thing though it is a lifetime thing <laughs> <laughs> I really actually feel a very personal direct connection with the entire audience with the individuals of the entire audience mm. I want them to come back every year I want them to grow and enjoy and share it and 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 to to have that as kind of a bit of sanity in our world, mm-hmm. you know, a chance to kind of, kind of get central, get to get, I don't know what, I'm, I don't know what word I'm looking for. Just kind of get kind of, I don't know what the right word is here. But I'm not, uh, you know, just to fall into that place where you go, yeah, this is, well, it's, it's, this, it's, this is a reminder of what life should be about. It's, I, we, we live in a time where we're inundated with too much information all the time, whether we are on social media, whether we have the television with the scrolling, what news is happening, what horrific events the, the world is presenting us that may not affect our direct world, our local, you know, where we live, but, but have an impact on us emotionally. And I really feel like what you present is an opportunity to pause and ponder and really think about the important things in life. And that's this, this collection does that it has an opportunity to let's take a breather from all of it. That's why seeing it in the theater is the best way to, to experience it. Absolutely. And to, to just have a moment with, you know, experiencing this bizarre journey that we're on and take a break from, I think we're too, we're techni- technologically inundated. I think it's too much. It's, we are. This and is, we, and yeah. we, we do happen to live in a city that, that encourages that. Yeah, exactly. You know, if it wasn't LA or New York or Paris or London, I mean, it's just, there's just so much going on. Yeah. I, I want to ask you about a, um, before you go, I want to ask no, you about a particular I'm here for you, a personal favorite animators that I really, um, I'm just a fan of just, uh, the Brothers Quay. They're I, great. I saw them. Uh, I must have. Did been you come the, to the academy to see them? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I I can't even remember how I saw them, but I did end up getting uh, a bootleg videotape. This is years ago um, when VHS was a thing, and would watch their stuff over and over. I mean, it would just. 
what is your opinion on them? And have they been part of the show? I'm not sure. I'm not aware yes. if they have. Okay, good. Yeah, they, they had their film Masca, which you probably have never seen. No, uh, was in the show and a number of which, years which ago. Which one? Which do you know? Which one is it on your website? Oh no, you know we don't have the early editions all out online. Gotcha. So, or on DVD. Right. So not with. Only the newer ones are available by year. Okay. All the previous ones are curated by DVD. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful film. It, it, they're, they, they, uh, look, I'll, I'll say they're friends. They're, you mm-hmm. know, they've been to my home. And when the Academy wanted to have them uh, as the focus of the Mark Davis lecture of, about eight years ago, the Academy said, you know, come on out. We'll pay for your airfare. We'll put you up at the hotel. You can spend a week with us. And, and they they asked me to communicate with them and and, and re- reaching them is is kind of funny because when I I called and Timothy answered the phone mm-hmm. and he said oh oh hi Ron uh, how are you and I said good and I said how are you he says well good uh, one of us isn't here right now and and so you know they're 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 particularly themselves they are just oh. so charming and so peculiar <laughs> and. Um, they're they're um, they're artists. They're true artists making not just animation but live action movies as well. Yeah, it, 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 their stuff. I mean, for those who've never seen just uh, Quay Q U A Y Brothers Quay, look them. I mean, there's something just bizarre, emotional, uh, d- difficult to explain. But they you they do the animation. Um, they're animated shorts often with found objects. Uh, or at least one would think be found, but in some cases it's almost, it's, it's beautiful, ugly all at once. It's right. Am I, am I I describing this? You see, uh, you can see, uh, dolls that are misshapen and uh, manipulated in horrible, tragic ways. Uh, you can see shavings of metal that are animated. I mean, microscopic, you know, with virtually no depth of field. Uh, screws coming out of objects that shouldn't have it happening. Uh, it's about sound and design and timing and bringing you into a place. And uh, the music, the we music have a, too. We, we actually have a place in LA that uh, is uh, in love with him, of with these guys, uh, and it, it makes sense. What is it? What is it, it? It's the Museum of Jurassic Technology. Huh. Have you been there? No, I haven't. Oh, Where is you this? have been missing out, my friend. Tell me. It's on Venice Boulevard, right in Culver City, mm-hmm. uh, near, oh, I can't remember what street, but it's it's just nor- on the north side of Venice Boulevard, and you would walk by this place not even know it existed. It really. But the, wait a second. It's museum? a museum of, of Jurassic technology. <laughs> okay. And it's, you just don't know whether what you're watching is real were entirely fabricated and it's it's you, you don't go with young kids you go when you've got early in the day when you got lots of energy and you can sit and concentrate and it's like visiting a uh a, a, a quay brothers exhibit they have actually a ricky j exhibit there of decaying dice Oh so I, you, I have to go to this. I have to go to this place. You, you, you won't. You're only going to be talking about this. You're going to forget about the show of shows after seeing is, this. Is, is it's it amazing. Of, is it one of those pop ups where it's no, no, like no? An, it's, it's been there Instagram for like thing? 25 years. Oh, really? Okay, because I think like a lot of these art installations are opportunities for people to take selfies with art, oh, which no. kind of annoy me. But no, uh, that, the, I would never imagine anybody taking a picture inside there. Okay, they have a tea room. It's an unhosted tea room. You just sit down and you can grab tea and biscuits and sit and read. Or, you know, they have a library and they have a, a, a space with doves in it, <laughs> you know, that are flying around. And it's just, it's it's incredible. Wow. It's, it, oh my God. But it's really not for everybody. You got to be a little bit more cerebral and be willing to kind of take your time. You got to read. You got to listen. You got to pay attention. And not try to do the whole thing in a day because it's just, 
it's so dense and so wonderful. And they are uh, the fellow who created that was a Cal Arts graduate, and he's a huge fan of, of uh, the a Cal Arshan. Yeah, and they have a, they have a theater in the in the place, and they play their films a lot. So wow. if you're looking for a place to sit down, and I don't know how you can request a film. I don't know if you can, but occasionally you'll see you know some of their earlier films well not for everybody pretty much describes everything i like so um ron diamond thank you so much for coming on the film threat podcast to talk about uh talk about your show um uh give us the website one last time make sure people know it's the animated animation show of shows.com Ron, thank you uh, for what you do. You, uh, unbeknownst to you, you changed my life. It's incredible by seeing seeing these films at a young age, and just um, it's something I've just never forgotten. And I was just so delighted to meet you. I think it was like three, four years ago, and um, I'm just so ecstatic you came on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and you know, I hope that your readers and listeners get a chance to go see the show. I think they will be very moved and whether it's in Louisville, Kentucky or New York city or Patchogue, New York or wherever we're playing it, it, we've gotten a lot of places and it's a, it's a, it, it's a great experience. I'm really pleased about what I get to do. This is one aspect of my creative life that, that I don't get everything I want, but I'm pretty darn close to 99%. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Wow. Well, thank, thank you, you again. I'm really grateful for the opportunity, Chris. I think what you're doing is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you.